When I first saw Slicer, he was not at all what I would call a doctor, even by the standards of the wasteland. He struggled to look even remotely like a physician. His red scrubs had probably been white at some point, and the band oiler of obviously used medical equipment he had slung over him was not encouraging at all. Falling back on my first thought of him, he looked more like a raider. I had to resist the temptation to shoot him on the spot. Only the assurances of the various townsponies had stopped me. That, and the laid-back attitude of the doc, easily diffused my initial tension. Plus, Mustang's sudden hoof on my shoulder shot any thoughts of gun violence right out of the window. Mustang! What are you doing here? I thought you were buying ammo. Like, lots of it. I was going to buy ammo, Elder, but then I found a scrap dealer. Uh, what? What? No, didn't you know? I make junk rounds. Mustang levitated one of the rounds in front of me. My inner tech pony cringed at the sight of it. Didn't he know that junk rounds were, like, really bad for guns? I'd save my complaints until he started maintaining it. I waited patiently as Slicer dealt with his patient. Thank you, my dear physician. I was feeling in need of medicine. The rhyming. Ugh, that horrible rhyming. It could only be one pony. I mean, zebra. When Slicer levitated a Geiger counter over me, his eyes nearly bugged out as it clicked faster and faster as it got higher on my horn. Take it away! Take it away! I yelled in alarm. Mustang started inching away from me, and suddenly Crosshair was looking into the room from the other side of the doorway. Pausing for a moment, I reconsidered what I had just said. I mean, fix it, fix it, fix it! I'm trying to just calm down. Surprise you're not glowing. Slicer galloped over to the fridge in the corner and pulled out a bottle, a pack of Rataway, and a large magnet. He levitated a drinking glass and a tube of Wonder Glue down from the shelf. After Wonder Gluing the magnet to the base of the glass, he then dumped the Rataway and the contents of the bottle into it. Rushing back over, he applied some more Wonder Glue to the rim of the mystery potion and slammed it over my horn, attaching it to the base of my skull. Ow! I screeched, my voice cracking a little. What the hell? Lifting up the Geiger counter, Slicer let out a relieved sigh as the clicking came back, but to more of a subdued rate. Well, you're lucky that it hasn't fallen off yet. And hopefully this will prevent that. Gingerly touching header on the base of the glass, I couldn't help but wince. What is this? Don't touch that! Slicer yelled, smacking my hoof away. The glass is the only thing between every pony else and the radiation. What about me? Oh, well it's going straight to you. What? Don't worry. The magnet's attracting it away from you. I was just kidding. What? Magnets don't work like that. Oh, really? Who's the doctor here? But... But science! I waved my hooves around, trying to emphasize my statement. I think the Geiger counter knows better, he stated, patting me on the head, giving me the world's biggest knowing smile. Dr. Slicer had me lay down on a medical gurney and then placed a breathing mask on me connecting it to a canister. As he turned it on, the strange smell entered my nostrils, making me lightheaded. As my head rested on the bedding against my will, I looked over to my companions. Crosshair was having a whispered conversation with the doctor, both of them casting me odd looks. Clearly, Crosshair was concerned over my health and just... comparing notes. Yeah, that's it. He had the most medical experience of our little group, after all. Of course, Crosshair was just checking for suspicions. Fret not, Elder. Everything will be taken care of in your leave of absence. Mustang's honest-sounding words failed to assure me, but moments later I passed out, making it a moot point. Upon waking, I happily noted that my breathing was much smoother after Slicer had opened me up and finished what Crosshair started. There wasn't a disconnected feeling I had in my ribs, just a very numb ache and I'll admit that it caused me no end of relief. My surgery took a surprisingly long time, so long, in fact, that Mustang and Crosshair would end up finishing the tasks they had originally been sent out to do. Mustang had a large burlap sack tied around his side, away from Hailstorm's barrels. The extra weight didn't seem to phase him as he stood mostly still, humming a strange tune during my examination. We paid the good doctor for the surgery and the checkup, which amounted to just testing every part of my body to make sure it moved correctly. Well, okay. 
It did involve a bunch of other poking and prodding devices. Their purpose is alien to me. And then there was this, like, weird suction device, and I don't even know what it was about, but it was freaking weird. After all, I specialize in weapons and terminals. Medical technology is sorely lacking in my repertoire of knowledge. We bunked down in an old apartment flat just outside of Snow Ridge. It was rented to us by a surprisingly kindly innkeeper. The interior of our apartment was very spartan in its decoration. No furniture besides an old dining table and a writing desk in what most ponies would probably consider their living rooms. The kitchen was likewise sparingly furnished, with only a fridge, stove, and counter. Mustang, upon noticing the lack of furniture, dumped the heavy mailbag onto the writing desk, whilst Crosshair went exploring upstairs. Elder, come see what I found in the market. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, Mustang said whilst undoing the straps on his heavy bag. I stood next to him as he levitated the bag and carefully poured its contents onto the table. A jumbled assortment of weapon parts lay before us. Why Mustang would buy this stuff really was beyond me. We are supposed to be getting rid of extra weight, not adding more. Now I know what you're thinking, Elder, he said, but I highly doubted that. Yes, that is a Western Equestrian Armaments M1918 automatic rifle. That piqued my interest. The name was one of those companies mentioned back at the Trotworth's headquarters. I glanced at the table, unsure of what part went to where. Mustang clearly detecting that I wanted to see the rifle, he began putting it together with his telekinesis. Hey, are those external parts winterized? I asked, halting Mustang's reassembly and yanking the gun over to me, examining it up close. I took time to examine the barrel, ammo clip, and firing mechanism. The material seemed to be camouflaged, similar to the limited models of winterized power armor I'd seen in old posters. Show him the other surprise, Star Paladin, Crosshair said, walking into the room. Ah, yes, Mustang muttered, digging through his mostly empty saddlebag before pulling out a brown object. The smell of fresh leather hit my nostrils and made me flinch, as it reminded me... Reminded me of... Never mind. It's not important. Besides... The smell was actually kind of delightful. The leather was fashioned into a holster, made to be worn around the neck and over a pony's chest. It is for that shotgun of yours, Elder. Can't keep having it in those steel saddlebags. You never know when you'll need it to engage enemies up close and personal, Crosshair elaborated. I breathed in the scent of the freshly made leather, grinning like a goof as I tried it on. The holster sat perfectly. Maybe a little too perfectly. Did Crosshair... Take my chest size when he was patching me up. Before more morose thoughts could plague my head, Mustang had finished assembling the automatic rifle. The gun was a bit of a beast, yet it looked like a Colt's toy in Mustang's hooves. He double-checked the gun, making sure it sounded right and everything clicked perfectly, before levitating it over to me. This gun is for you, brave elder. Knight Crosshair told me of your valiant battle against two young snowhounds. Seriously? Those were young snowhounds? I'd really hate running into an adult. He told me of how you bravely risked your life to stun our zebra friend's attacker, even after losing your primary weapon. And here I was beginning to forget about losing my grenade machine gun. I had barely had a chance to use it. Mustang helped secure the automatic rifle into my battle saddle. It felt good and weighty against my side. I placed my scratch up and sawed off shotgun into the leather holster, now feeling like a proper steel ranger or at least a steel ranger with good taste in lower-tier guns. You should rest now, Elder. I think we will be able to reach the death tra- I, I mean stable, tomorrow, Crosshair said, making his way over to one of the mats. Mustang was folding up the large mailbag, making it small enough to fit inside of one of his saddlebags. He'd cleared off the writing desk and was setting up his battle saddle, levitating a screwdriver and hammer as he clearly intended to do some minor repairs or fine-tuning. I didn't feel particularly tired, though, so I opted to assist Mustang with his battle saddle. Before going to bed, I removed the glass off of my horn with some solvent that Slicer had prescribed, only to find the inner contents had frozen solid. Getting rid of that was humiliating. Let's just leave it at that. It felt strange, walking along Mustang and Crosshair, I mean. Each day they seemed to surprise me more and more. Mustang revealing himself to be very inventive when it came to battle saddles. 
Last night, he'd taken the time to show me how he could angle and aim his heavy weapon so efficiently, without the use of an interface like the built-in systems of my power armor, or the uh, dexterity of Crosshair. We left Snow Ridge early in the morning. I'd wanted to get out to an early start so we could reach this mystery stable before midday. Then I would probably have to spend a couple hours figuring out how to hack the door controls, but that was future Inkwell's problem. The snow started to fall after about two hours, growing steadily heavier. Seeing what was ahead became quite a problem, upon forcing us to stop and seek out street signs to determine where the hell we were. The heavy snowfall made me thankful for my helmet. My two companions had trouble with snowflakes flying in their eyes. As we traveled, the sounds of gunfire could be heard just barely over the howling winds. Crosshair did his best to navigate us from the fighting, no sense in getting tangled up in a fighter fight we didn't need to be in. Wintertrot had other plans, though. The stable we were looking for kept bringing us closer and closer to the gunshots. Eventually, the din of the howling snow was eclipsed by the sounds of battle. We all flinched as an explosion all too similar to my missile launcher detonated on the upper floor of a building down the street from us. There was no ideal cover nearby. Or at least, nothing Mustang and I could crouch behind effectively. Crosshair, on the other hand, was easily able to find a spot to hide behind, staying low as he readied his rifle. A group of about a dozen ponies emerged from the side street, wearing dark blue winter gear and goggles. One of my blue-coated ponies was hefting a missile launcher in a telekinetic field. These ponies showed up as amber on my helmet's EFS. I readied my weapons anyway. I wasn't taking any chances with a group of well-armored ponies. They spotted us, but didn't fire. Instead, the group of ponies took up defensive positions and simply waited. I glanced over at Mustang and Crosshair. Both of them looked ready to wipe these ponies out. They were both looking at me and the other ponies, the triggers on their weapons cocked and ready to fire. Wait here, I I'm, uh, I'm going to go talk to them, I said, with complete confidence, not stuttering at all. I was already moving before either of them could think of stopping me. As I stepped closer to the other ponies, I could feel the tension increasing. I couldn't get a read on how hostile they were, though, since my helmet's EFS spell crapped out on me. Probably exposure to the cold. I stopped advancing about ten feet from them. That close enough there, Tin Can, a red-coated earth pony addressed me in a commanding tone. Any closer, and we'll see how well that fancy armor of yours protects an exposed horn. I brisked mentally, but kept my cool keeping the anger out of my voice. <clears throat> I believe introductions are in order, I stated, whilst doing my best to look directly at the stallion who addressed me. I am Inkwell, current elder of the Winter Trot Steel Rangers. The reaction I got was not as I expected. The red pony seemed unperturbed whilst his underlings seemed confused. The leader made a slashing motion with his hoof, silencing the group. Elder, huh? You don't sound that old to me. I'm not, I replied flatly, leaning forward and making myself as intimidating as possible. You still haven't told me your name yet, I added. My voice amplifier, whilst not making me more charismatic, does have the benefit of making me sound more intimidating. Badass. Heh, <laughs> look out, boys. You've got a badass over here. The other ponies all laughed with him. These ponies were apparently immune to my infectious charm. All right, Tin Cat. Inkwell. I growled, starting to lose my patience. Fine. Inkwell, then. I want you and your two buddies over there out of here. I was genuinely surprised. Most ponies would have asked for caps or our guns. But boss, they're running around with all them strap fuckers. We can't just let them. The complaining stallion was cut off as the red stallion smacked him across the face. Do I look blind to you? I flinched as the stallion was hit yet again, his nostrils making a horrid crunching sound. I can see the fucking zebra, he bellowed, landing three more blows on the face before he punched the stallion in the stomach, leaving him to curl up on the ground. Uh, was all I could think to say. I mean, that escalated really quickly. I mean, one minute I'm annoyed at name-calling, the next I'm witnessing a stallion pummel one of his own right in front of me. Sorry you had to see that. The newbies don't always remember to speak only when spoken to. He apologized insincerely, as he wiped the blood off of his own boot-covered hooves. I glanced back at Crosshair and Mustang. 
Crosshair had a neutral expression. Mustang looked particularly uncomfortable with the display. I'm afraid we're not leaving, I said decisively. The red stallion glared at me. We need to get to this area, and we can't wait, I clarified. The leader chuckled to himself, as if he'd been not expecting my audacity. I was getting fed up with the stallion and switched my rifle from safe to ready to fire. The group of ponies went tense, the click of the safety silencing the stifled chuckling. And if it weren't for the howling wind, I think you could have heard a pin drop. <laughs> All right, Inkwell. You want through here? Fine. But you'll get torn apart if you try to go through these streets alone. He smiled. And I didn't like it. So, let's work together. You three stick close to us, and maybe you'll get through here alive. He paused for a moment, letting his words sink in. Oh, of course, if you want to try to go alone, the other snow pirates won't take kindly to your presence. Probably riddle that zebra with bullets. I'll discuss your proposal with my fellow rangers, I said, turning to trot back over to them. I approached my rangers, Crosshair looking frustrated with me, and Mustang looking relieved to see me. Elder Inkwell, that was bold. It isn't often that some pony would approach a heavily armored mob of ponies, even in good armor, Mustang said, giving me an unsure grin, probably blown away by my awesomeness. What did they say, Elder? Crosshair's voice was flat, his face equally neutral as he stared down the scope of his rifle. They, uh, want us to tag along with them. At least until we reach the other side of the battlefield. Crosshair lifted his eyes from the snow pirates, shaking his head slowly. This is a bad idea, Elder Inkwell, Crosshair stated firmly. That reminds me. Those pirates have some kind of grudge against you. We have a bad history with one another. That is all, Crosshair said with contempt. I don't like them either. Some of the stories I heard in Snow Ridge. Well, they make raiders seem tame by comparison. Don't you see those ponies? They didn't even flinch when the leader started beating one of them to a pulp, Mustang said. The amount of discipline or fear those ponies had drilled into them was unsettling. Joining forces with them is a bad idea at best. Suicide at worst. Crosshair lifted his hoof and made a chopping motion. The best thing you to do... He's killed them all right now and be done with it. I got the distinct impression that Crosshair really didn't like these ponies. I agree with you both. Both of my rangers looked relieved. Getting involved with these snow pirates is a bad idea, but we really don't have much option. Crosshair glowered at me, and Mustang looked uncomfortable. We have to work with them. If we don't, it could take days to go around and avoid fighting them and the Super Stallions. Crosshair made frustrated groans, before cursing in what I could only assume was the zebra native tongue. Elder, I will support your decision. Mustang spoke slowly, choosing his words carefully. But, if these snow pirates even show a hint at betraying us, we cannot hesitate. As soon as we're through the war zone, we'll deal with them, I promised. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? Traveling with the snow pirates was awkward, to say the least. Half of them looked like they wanted to shoot Crosshair now that he was up close, and the other half looked like they just wanted to get away from him. I felt a little blind walking without my helmet's EFS. I'd gotten used to seeing all the little warning blips it provided when working at optimal capacity. We could hear gunfire from as little as two streets away. The Red Stallion, who hadn't been so nice to share his name, was leading the way. I decided to mentally name him Red, until I could figure his name out. Red spoke into a small radio on occasion, probably with the other snow pirates in the area. We'd been wearily trudging along for roughly an hour when we were attacked. Three super stallions came exploding through a nearby wall, screaming and bellowing, and slammed into the group of the snow pirates. Behind them, two abominations lumbered forward on mismatched limbs, coming straight for me. With a manly squeak, I fumbled to pull out my shotgun. Abandoning that, I instead aimed the holster at the nearest mutant and telekinetically pulled the shotgun's trigger. The buckshot ripped into the face of the freak, blowing off a few waving tentacles. With a gurgling bellow, it collapsed forwards. 
Letting out a relieved exhalation of breath, I turned to see Crosshair. See? Nothing to worry about. Suddenly, my vision was cut out. What? I was suddenly lifted up by my head and flailed around like a full rattle. Crosshair! Help me! It's touching my face! I heard screams and shouts as the snow pirates fought the super stallions and the roaring of Mustang's beast hailstorm in the background. The monstrosity slammed me into the ground like a walnut, futilely trying to crack open my power armor. It didn't hurt, but it did win me and leave me feeling dazed. As the mutant flipped me up, it let go, the tendrils going limp as I fell. I hit the ground with a heavy thud, struggling to take in a breath. I glanced up to see the abomination flailing around on fire. Crosshair walked over to me, grinning like a Cheshire cat. Get up, Elda. There is more fighting to be done. Crosshair was right. I'd already been humiliated. It was time to make up for it. I pulled out my shotgun, contemplating a heroic pose, and decided on a one-liner. Unfortunately, I was lifted from behind my tail and swung like a baton, sending Crosshair flying through the air and into Mustang. And then came the slamming into the ground again, at which point I lost my telekinetic hold of the shotgun. I was left with very few options. My missile launcher and rifle were both pointing away from the abomination. As I impacted the ground, my legs played out and saw the magi drill. Of course! Activating the drill, I curled up, bringing the drill close to my tail and slicing through the abomination's appendages, gripping it. The now tongueless beast reeled back and let out a guttural howl of pain. Taking advantage, I launched myself forward onto it. I stunned it by slamming down on its head with both hooves. I grabbed it around the chest with one hoof and plunged my magi drill into the chest. I let out an unarticulated scream that matched its death cries. When it finally stopped moving, I stood up and looked around. Every pony was still fighting the two surviving stallions. Oh, come on! I moaned. Did every pony seriously miss that? Kind of busy, Elder, Mustang replied, not even turning around. Perhaps you could lend a hoof. Mustang was firing hailstorm in bursts, taking care not to kill the snow pirates, which was no easy task as the mutant ponies were fighting them in melee. One of the super stallions was using his hooves and firing two battle saddle mounted rifles whenever the snow pirates got too far out of his hooves. The other surviving mutant, Pony, was slamming down a ferocious super sledge with abandon, laughing the entire time. Red and three snow pirates were trying to kill the rifle-wielding super stallion. I ran up alongside Crosshair and Mustang, taking aim with my rifle and picking a target. I chose the super sledge wielder, because he was much easier to aim at. The rifle practically growled as I fired it, its report being more subdued than I would imagine. I missed the stallion. Unfortunately, I hit one of the snow pirates trying to fight him. He howled out in pain as his hoof was shot, causing him to stagger backwards. The super stallion took great clean pummeling him with the super sledge, laughing maniacally, even as the other snow pirates took the opportunity to barrage him with gunfire. Okay, that could have gone better, but I could fix this. A well-placed missile could probably take him out, I activated the missile launcher's HUD systems and aimed at the super mutant. My helmet's HUD flickered, but I didn't need to be all that accurate with this weapon anyways. I aimed roughly between the stallion's legs and his body, knowing I'd at least cripple him. I bit down on the trigger, and the missile roared away in a pillar of fire. At the last possible moment, during the super stallion's wild swinging, the tip of his super sledge grazed the missile, sending it careening off course. Its new trajectory flew over the heads of the remaining snow pirates, only to explode on a collapsed, inconspicuous building behind them, peppering them with concrete and shrapnel. Suddenly, a secondary explosion went off behind them, sending every pony stumbling away, followed incredibly by a third and much larger explosion. To my well-tuned ears, I could pick out the sound of grenades, missiles, and at least three other types of ammunition going off in large quantities. All I could do was cry at the waste of so much unused ammunition. A heavy door flew out of the building, flipping into a low arc to embed itself through the super stallion and into the ground. <laughs> Stupid ponies must kill! The stallion gurgled. Even sheared in half, it was still trying to kill us. I found myself galloping towards the mutant, gaining momentum as I ran. 
My forward advance culminated into a solid right hook, cracking the mutant pony's jaw. You son of a bitch! I cried, manly tears running down my face. I began slamming my hooves into the mutant's face, letting my unbridled rage seep out. All that, all that ammunition, that glorious, glorious ammunition, gone because of you! The super stallion seemed to not feel my punches as it tried to ineffectively hit me. Regardless, I continued to land blow after blow on its tough skull. Elder, are you okay? Mustang asked, placing a hoof on my shoulder. The now limp mutant lay cooling on the ground, its blood already freezing. I looked up at the burning ammo dump and sniffled. <sniffs> no, I warbled before latching onto Mustang and crying like a little foal. Crosshair and the remaining snow pirates watched me with mixed expressions of concerned confusion. None of them understood my pain. If it's any consolation, that was one of our smaller ammo caches, a snow pirate said, trying to be helpful. If anything, I cried harder. They had more ammunition than me. I cried onto Mustang's shoulder for several minutes. By the time I was done, the dead super stallion was buried under about an inch of snow and everyone was looking distinctively unsettled, probably because of the snow piling on them. Better? Mustang asked, smiling uncertainly. I gave him a quick nod. Right. Well, if you're done crying, we need to get moving. We're all soaking up radiation, and there's no point in sticking around since you blew up all of our ammo. I think Red might have just been a tiny bit upset with me. Penknife. Gold tooth. I want you both to scout ahead. I want no more surprises for the last leg of this trip. Be ready to fire on my orders. Two stallions with rifles nodded, before galloping off into the snow. Is it wise to split up like that? Mustang asked, seemingly asking every pony. You were here just ten minutes ago, right? You saw what those super stallions and their scuttler pits can do. Ah, so now I had a name for the abomination I killed. The last thing we need to do is wander into more groups of waiting mutants. Or worse. I dreaded to think of something worse than a super stallion squad. Snowhounds, maybe? Elder, it's time you took a ride away, Crosshair said, holding out a bag of the orange liquid. Be quick, Elder. The liquid inside can start to freeze if left out too long. I grimaced as I levitated the pouch over to me, first splashing some of it onto my exposed horn and then lifting my helmet to drink the rest of the foul medication. The sounds of distant fighting grew fainter as we trotted alongside the few remaining snow pirates. What had once been a formidable attack force was reduced to five ponies, two of them whom were scouting ahead. I'd learned from Crosshair that one super stallion escaped and had pony-napped two injured snow pirates. Mustang, to my surprise, proposed following after them. But Red was adamant about pressing on, stating that they were probably dead by now anyway. I gave Mustang a questioning glance, to which he replied a firm shake, and a look that suggested to the contrary. How he knew what I was thinking without seeing my face, I didn't know, but I found it unsettling that he could read me so easily. Red occasionally spoke into his radio, speaking in some kind of code that seemed to involve a lot of metaphors. I kept my eyes out for any sort of identifiable landmarks, in case we had to pass through the area again. We did pass an old gun shop, the sign faded and marred with rust. It looked like it had been looted some time ago, but I made a mental note to check it out if we passed through again. Over time, my eyes began to itch as the rataway coating my horn slowly seeped down, and in irritation, I kept forgetting my helmet was on as I brought a hoof to scratch my face. The repeated clanging was causing everyone to stare. Are you okay, Elder? Crosshair asked. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. Totally fine. Just, um, doing some field repairs. Every pony gave me strange looks. Oh, yeah. You just gotta whack it here, uh, to get the HUD back up. Yeah. Cock noodles. No pony was buying that. In the end, Red just shrugged it off, pointing ahead. We're nearly there, Tin Cat. I mean, Inkwell. Red said, warily eyeing a large clearing up ahead. Possibly an old auto wagon parking lot. We can part ways up there, and then I'll have the delightful task of explaining how I lost most of my squad to Wastelander reinforcements. I winced a little, feeling a little bad for the red unicorn. Sure, he was a colossal cock noodle, 
but considering what some contingents of the Steel Rangers did to some pony who messes them up this badly, I'd really hate to see what Snow Pirates did to their screw-ups. We walked a little farther until we came upon a small junction. One street leading off and behind the parking lot. I think that is far enough, Crosshair said calmly, stopping in his tracks. He aimed his rifle at the Snow Pirates, who reacted as expected, stepping away from him so they could aim their weapons. Mustang responded by standing next to Crosshair, revving up his minigun menacingly. What the fuck, Tin Can? Call off your zebra, psycho! Red growled, shifting his aim between Mustang and Crosshair. Do not listen to him, Elder. This has been a setup from the start, Crosshair explained, cocking his rifle and Red moved to his radio. Check your helmet's EFS, Elder. Should let you know that two ponies are waiting in ambush. Oh, right. I hadn't told anyone about my HUD being a malfunctioning piece of crap right now. I went with the tried and true method of field repair and dingled the side of my head. The HUD actually flickered back to life, showing critical damage failure messages and my EFS detecting two blips ahead of us. I can see them cross- was all I got to say before everything went white. An explosive blinded me. My recently healing ribs were saved only by my power armor. Mustang's minigun roared. The sound of ponies dying filled my ears as my vision came back to me. Red was gone. His two subordinates were dead, reduced to flaming pulp by Mustang and Crosshair. My helmet's HUD showed a fleeing red blip approaching two blips moving on the upper floors of a hardware store. Hey, my HUD and EFS were working again. The explosion must have given the helmet a jolt. Crosshair, they've got two snipers on the upper floors. Can you take them out? I asked moving down the street that would take us around the parking lot. I cannot see, Elder. The scope on my rifle got shattered. Well, that sucks. So much for sniping the pirates. Might I suggest we move underground? Mustang proposed as he cleared some snow from a partially obscured ponyhole cover. No way his snipers could get us down there. Mustang! You genius! Passing underground will be perfect! We would be able to find the stable we were looking for as well. Stables built beneath cities usually connected to underground tunnels or sewer systems at one point. Normally, they kind of overlapped and interconnected when they had to. I tried lifting the ponyhole cover, but found to much of my horror that it had been frozen in place. Stand back, Elder! Let me aid you! Mustang declared with gusto, shunting me aside. I could do it. I'm not weak. Honestly, I'm not. The cover was frozen by like several inches of ice. Mustang took a moment to properly position his hoof before hammering it down with a resounding crack. Mustang then dug his hoof under the lid and flipped it off. I'm not weak! I yelled with a trace of petulance. They looked at me in concern. I'm all right, see? I dinged my helmet in a totally convincing manner. Right as rain, right as rain. If anything, they were giving me more worried looks. Fuck, they must have think I've gone senile already. To escape their judging gazes, I leapt into the tunnel with a brief, I got this. I landed surprisingly well, my power armor taking enough shock from the fall to prevent me from hurting myself. I lifted my hoof to turn on my helmet's floodlight, but before I could, a large weight slammed me into the ground. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! I screamed explosively, the air being forced from my lungs. I flailed my hooves in a desperate attempt to dislodge my attacker. Elder! Calm yourself. <laughs> it's only little old me, Mustang replied amiably. <laughs> I croaked, trying to breathe under his considerable bulk. Mustang took the hint and moved his large form off of me. I gasped loudly, taking in a choking breath and prepared to turn my helmet's floodlight on again, when I was suddenly slammed to the ground again. Ah! Mustang! Get it off! Get it off! Inkwell, calm yourself. It's only crosshair. How did you know it was me? Crosshair asked, still sitting on my back. Uh, I heard you falling, Mustang answered. But before Crosshair could respond, I tossed him off my back and regained my footing. Once again, my hoof was stopped short from turning on my floodlight, but this time it was of my own violation. Did anyone just hear that hissing sound? I asked. That's, That's not good. good, Crosshair and Mustang said in unison. I turned on my helmet's light and felt my heart flutter with joy, as I saw a sign proudly proclaiming TIT Stable Number 7. 
Huh. That went better than expected. My floodlights beam lowered, revealing a horde of ghouls. They all turned as one, raising their heads and letting out the most blood-curdling roar I've ever heard. Oh, cocknoodles. Footnote. Level up. Inkwell. Level 3. New perk added. Attention addict. Because of the way you act, you attract a lot of attention. Sometimes this is a good thing. Other times, not so much. Crosshair. Level 3. New perk added. Vigilant Watcher. If something is off or feels suspicious, you'll probably notice it. Plus two to perception whenever an ambush is about to take place. Mustang. Level two. New perk added. More DACA. Get the lead out. With either magical or mechanical means, you manage to fire ballistic weapons 50% faster than they are meant to. Magical energy weapons are not affected by this perk.